Hi everyone, I'm Mukulika. I'm a group product manager at Intuit, uh, building their modern SaaS platform on top of Kubernetes on AWS. Before that, uh, I was product director at a startup called Aplatix, which got acquired by Intuit. Uh, and we open sourced a workflow engine, a container native workflow engine for Kubernetes called Argo. And today we are not going to talk about Intuit, we'll talk about our open source project, Argo. With me, I have Jesse, whom half of you know. <laughs> so. <laughs> uh, yes, I'm Jesse, a software engineer working on uh, Argo. Uh, more recently, I've been working on the Argo CD project. Uh, we have uh, several projects. Uh, yes. Workflows is one, a CD is another. So I will first spend a few minutes talking about at a high level what Argo is, who is using it, why we built it, and then Jesse will do a de deep dive demo and answer any questions you guys have. So uh, we open sourced Argo because uh, we felt that when you start building apps on top of Kubernetes, uh, just having kubectl doesn't help. You need a way to manage workloads on Kubernetes. Uh, so we open sourced a workflow engine. Uh, why is it called container native workflow engine? Because firstly, uh, we build it as a Kubernetes controller and a custom resource. So there's a workflow custom resource and a Kubernetes controller. Uh, in this workflow, every step runs as a pod. Uh, so it is very highly scalable. And when we talk about the use cases, uh, majority of the times Argo is being used is by machine learning teams to run uh, multiple workflows in parallel to train models. Uh, we started with a workflow-based uh, DSL, and then we expanded it to include DAG as well. And Jesse will show both the examples, because again, we needed to support uh, uh, examples where you can fan out, fan in, based on conditions, etc. There are four open source projects under Argo. We started with Argo Workflow. Uh, mainly for CI to begin with, then expanded it to ML and data workflows. Uh, then uh, we open sourced another project called Argo CI, which is mainly Argo workflows, but a little customized for CI use case. Uh, recently, we open sourced Argo CD because, uh, for example, Intuit was using Spinnaker for doing continuous deployment on AWS. But they were baking AMIs to do continuous deployment, which takes more than an hour for the entire deployment process. We needed a very simple uh, Kubernetes native um, uh, deployment tool, and we built Argo CD. Uh, we won't talk about that in details today, but we can always have a follow-up session. And the last project is Argo Events. So um, our workflows and DAGs can be triggered by any external uh, event listener, whether it's a Lambda function or your own event listener. But then the community said, no, as a part of this, you should also have an event framework. So today, uh, one of our contributors, BlackRock, contributed their event framework. And then we are building on top of that. Um, who are using Argo. So these are very few uh, top contributors. Google and NVIDIA actually started from the very beginning of Argo project and help us drive roadmap. Google's uh, Kubeflow team, which is their machine learning open source project, Kubeflow and TensorFlow team, they use Argo a lot. Uh, and as well as NVIDIA. Cyrus Biotechnology is one of our first users, again, for machine learning. And of course, Intuit is using. We have many others who are not listed because we don't have permission to list them. Uh, again, use cases, ML, data workflows, and CI CD pipeline. Uh, with that, we will go to the demo. Uh, OK, so Argo is, uh, has a CLI and a UI. Um, both of these are actually optional. Uh, you can actually submit workflows using kubectl. Uh, but what the CLI and the UI give you is like a, a presentation of the workflow. It has extra features like um, validation, uh, resubmit, retry, pausing workflows, resuming workflows. So we'll start with the, um, our coin flip example. Um, 
OK, so all our examples you can find on our GitHub. Uh, so the first example that I'll show, show you is our coin flip. Uh, and you submit uh, using the CLI. And um, now that you submitted, we have a UI. This is the, the workflow that's running. Um, what this workflow is doing is um, it's, a, it's flipping a coin. Um, and based on the results of that coin flip, it'll either uh, flip the coin again if it's tails, or if it's head, it'll just stop. In this case, it just stopped. So let's, let's try again, um, maybe two more times. Uh, um, and what this is kind of demonstrating, uh, that one also got heads. OK, this, this one is a little more interesting. I uh, flipped the coin, it got tails. Flipped the coin again, it got tails. Flipped it, keep getting tails. And then um, it's going to keep going until it finally gets heads. Um, and so this is, this is the UI for um, Argo. But you, we also have the CLI, which you can see the same um, uh, information. Uh, this is the one that completed. Um, and the, the one that was more interesting was this one. Oh, no, not that one. Yeah. Um, so the, the, it shows kind of like a tree view of, of what happened, similar to uh, this graph view uh, of what happened. Um, so looking at the YAML, how, how this was um, defined, uh, we have uh, this steps section. Uh, a steps is a list of lists. The inner list represents all the steps you want to run in parallel. Uh, the outer list is all the steps, the step groups that you want to run in sequence. Um, and what you'll also see is we have this when clause. Uh, this when clause basically is saying only execute this step if the output result from that previous step, um, in this case it's called flip coin, only execute that this step if the previous uh, result was equal to heads, or in this case it was tails. Um, so what this workflow is <coughs> kind of illustrates some of the dynamism uh, that you can achieve with, uh, um, with our workflows. Um, we have a second style of um, defining workflows, which is the DAG-based approach. Um, so steps, if you think about it, is kind of like a top-down uh, iterative way of defining a workflow. But uh, for, some, for a lot of machine learning use cases, you want to define it uh, as a list, a list of tasks. And those tasks have dependencies on each other. Um, so the second example we have is um, Hold the mic because they can't hear that. Okay. Okay. So the second example is uh, the DAG diamond. Um, oops. Okay. So this workflow is just a classic diamond uh, pattern. You have A, uh, you have a, a, B, and C, D. C and B are dependent on A. D is dependent on C and D. Um, so if we look at the YAML for this, um, this is a, the other style that I mentioned, where you have a DAG-based template. Um, that DAG defines a list of tasks. Um, those tasks are defining what their dependencies are. Um, so th the, as I mentioned, DAG is, is great for more machine learning. Um, there's, you would use DAG if you want like, the most optimal execution path of your workflow, because you're not uh, for the steps-based approach, you're kind of waiting in for that fan in, uh, fan, yeah, that, that fan in step. Uh, where DAG, you can achieve a much more optimized workflow. Um, sometimes it's not also. Um, can you make it bigger. Some of them are. Uh, yeah. Come on. Can you guys see this? Is it bigger? Yes. Okay. Um, yeah, sometimes you can't represent uh, some workflows in the steps-based things. Like if you have uh, multiple roots uh, in your in your um, work in your DAG, um, but there's there's kind of like trade-offs between using steps and, and DAGs. Um, so Kubeflow, uh, Mukalika mentioned Kubeflow is uh, a user of Argo. This is actually their CI pipeline from Kubeflow.org, um, and this is doing. Um, I don't fully understand what what their workflow is doing, but I think it's doing a bunch of uh, CI and testing jobs. Um, and they, they use a DAG-based approach of defining their, um, 
workflows. One thing uh, that's nice about the UI is that we have a timeline view of how this workflow executed. Could you zoom in, please? Oh, okay, sure. Okay, so this, this is the timeline view of a workflow. So it, uh, whereas this shows you the dependency, uh, how, the, how the, it was executed in terms of dependent uh, steps, uh, this shows you see uh, chronologically how workflow steps were executed. So we, we can see from this view that um, these series of steps executed in parallel. Um, okay. And the next uh, example that I'll show you, um, I already submitted this um, and it ran to completion. This is a example of a workflow that is building InfluxDB. Um, and it's a full-fledged CI pipeline. Um, what you have here is it's performing a, a, a git clone of the InfluxDB source repo. Then it runs the unit test and a build in parallel. Um, after those two steps are done, it runs uh, ED integration tests in parallel with code coverage reports. Um, uh, one thing you can do with the UI is that uh, these, any step that produces artifacts uh, can be downloaded from the UI. So right here, I'm gonna um, click on, uh, yeah, one of the, the code coverage reports. This is uh, downloadable. Um, and then from once you expand that, uh, this is this is actually the artifact that was generated from that code coverage uh, report. Um, I mentioned that we did a build on this step. Uh, this actually has an artifact for influx DB, the, the actual server binary. Um, this is subsequently used in a later part of the workflow here. Um, this is what we call a daemon step. And what's happening here is that that, that binary that we produced in build is then used as an input artifact to this step. This step is actually running in that, that built InfluxDB binary. So this is the logs from InfluxDB. And it's running it as a background service to, this, to, the, to the rest of the workflow. Once this daemon step is run in, in the background, we now can run um, uh, clients to that, that, uh, that the InfluxDB instance. So in the next step that's happening after you demonize the InfluxDB server is that we initialize the database. So this is a curl. They have a REST API, so you can uh, curl like a create DB. And then it ran uh, um, three producers, which are doing posts, uh, HTTP posts to that, uh, that InfluxDB instance. And then we have a consumer that's doing HTTP uh, get. Um, and yeah, so the, this is kind of a more full-fledged example of how Argo um, workflows can be used in, in CI. Um, so those are, those are the, the, the main examples uh, I wanted to go through. There's, there's a, a whole bunch of uh, other features uh, that are available in uh, Argo workflows. Some of them I'll highlight. Like, so we have built-in artifact support. Um, the ones we support are S3 artifactory HTTP Git and um, what I uh, what we call a raw artifact. And this is just uh, if you're familiar with Unix here docs, it's kind of like having a um, a file in place that you can just place. It, we'll place it into the container for you, and then that like a, it's useful for like scripts, text files, configuration, um, and we'll place it into the the cont your container as an artifact, um, so you don't actually have to store it somewhere else. It's actually stored as, as part of the manifest. Um, some other cool features are the retry and resubmit of, uh, of workflows. Uh, so it's possible to have a workflow that failed um, certain parts of the steps, and then you want to just execute the failed portions of that step. So we call that a, a retry. Um, Similarly, you can resubmit the workflow in a memoized fashion, and that will uh, it'll create a new workflow. It'll mark all the steps that were um, passed in the first run, and then re ex act as if like uh, the failed steps have yet to uh, execute. So resubmit and retry, like we use all the time when um, CI jobs fail for environmental reasons. It's, it's very useful for that use case. 
Uh, suspend and resume is another use case uh, that we, to solve like approval steps. So if you have, you can predefine in your workflow a step where you just stop the workflow and then, um, with, and then require a resume of that workflow to proceed down the thing. Um, um, and I, th I would say the last, probably the last uh, really useful feature are exit hooks. Um, exit hooks mean I have a workflow um, and it can fail, like a CI job can fail, but at the end of, every time at the end of that workflow, I want some logic to execute, like send an email, um, you know, notify Slack or clean up. Uh, so exit hooks will always execute um, regardless of the status of the, the main workflow and it is useful for things like notifications, cleanup, and um, anything you want to run at the end of a workflow. Um, what we have coming up um, in terms of workflow, we want to implement queuing. So queuing, if you, if you have a small cluster or you can limit the number of concurrent, current, currently running workflows um, so that you so that they can make progress instead of flooding the system and just making very very slow progress on all of the workflows. Prioritization. So we want to take advantage of um, the Kubernetes prod, pod priority classes to um, to have a concept of priority and in, in, in scheduling. And finally, uh, persistence. Right now, all workflows are in Kubernetes at CD database. But uh, for if you want, you know. A long history. It's not the proper place if you want to store, uh, like, archive the logs of a, of a workflow or store it long term. Um, so that, that's all I had. If um, I'm happy to take any questions you guys have about Argo workflows, we have tons of more examples. If anything, show it where it's on the GitHub. Yeah, um, we have um, our GitHub is at Argo Proj slash Argo. Please star us. Yeah. Welcome any stars. Um, and there's a getting, it's really sh easy getting started. Um, it's, it's literally like a controller, a single controller and a UI deployment. Um, and you use kubectl or the Argo CLI to submit your workflow. So you can run this on Minikube and it, it works just as good as a real cluster. And all the examples are? Yeah, uh, all examples are in this, in this directory. Uh, happy to take any questions. Uh, so in the workflow, that there's a state of the workflow that fails and the, the retries configured. Um, those retries, uh, we have any mechanism to prevent people from shooting themselves in the loop and ending up on a loop that never. Oh, never uh, good question. So. Uh, yeah. So you're basically asking on uh, how can we retry intelligently. Um, there is a retry limit. So to, um, let me, I can bring that up really quick. Um, so so when we actually, when I say retry, there's, there's actually two retries. Uh, there is, um, this is, this is the example that I was talking about. Um, so you can actually specify a limit of 10 or, or whatever integer you um, want. And this will retry 10 times, at most 10 times. Um, that should, we, we have an open issue to have a backup, back off policy. So like an exponential back off if you don't want to retry immediately. Um, that's not in place yet, but it's something we um, want to add under the retry strategy field. Um, but uh, th the other type of retry, this, this is um, container retry. So this is retrying the container in an automatic fashion. The, the retry that I mentioned before is actually when you have a whole workflow that failed um, and you want to retry that entire workflow, but, but just the, the failed portions of that workflow. Uh, so that when I say retry, it's um, a little bit ambiguous, but this, there's, just know that there's two styles. You guys provide uh, um, guidelines in terms of either part of the state because if you're retrying, you have to be out of content. Um, is there any kind of guidelines that you guys provide? Oh, yeah. So if if your if your step your step sh 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 better be item potent uh, if, if you're gonna add this retry strategy to it. So it's really um, like we can't predict what's safe to retry. So. Uh, um, I think one thing, though, um, 
uh, one feature that I do think is, would be useful is that we actually distinguish uh, something that failed versus something that erred. Um, so something that failed is, is in the domain of the user, whereas something that erred is actually in the domain of like the system. Um, something like, I don't know, like environmental issue, like the pod has an image pull, it failed because it, it couldn't pull the image or something like that. Um, so, so I would like for a feature to have specify, be specific on what type of error, like how it failed, if it was an error or failed. That would be one enhancement that could be made um, where we have a little bit more intelligence on how we retry. Yeah, so if, if there, unless there were um, any things in here, like we have examples for uh, all of these YAMLs, so if, if any of these things kind of um, interest you, we can run through the, um, some of these examples. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Good job, man.